Hi, thanks for your interest in this video on Leaflet. This is one lecture of an entire course on Leaflet that's available on the Udemy platform. So if you like what you see and you make it to the end of this video, there will be information on how to sign up for that course. And there's actually a part one to this video that will probably make this one easier to understand. It talks about loading and styling point features in Leaflet from GeoJSON files, but it provides some useful background information as well. So if you find this information a little bit difficult to follow, maybe try watching that video first. It's available on my blog at Geospatial Brainstorming and on my YouTube channel too. Alright, let's get started. Welcome back students. We've made it through the options for styling points. In this lecture we'll take a look at some native leaflet methods for styling lines and polygons. These methods are nothing new, they're simply the same path options that we've seen already. The only thing new is the way that we handle them when the GeoJSON file is loaded. We don't have a point to feature function available for lines and polygons, but we have two other functions that serve a similar purpose. The style option of the GeoJSON constructor method takes a function that returns a set of path options in the form of a GeoJSON literal. Those path options get applied to every feature in the GeoJSON object that can take path options, which are all polylines and polygons. The onEachFeature option takes a function that provides access to each feature and allows you to do some processing with it. This is a good place to add a pop-up or tooltip to a feature that includes its attribute information. Okay, hopefully this makes sense. It's not a whole lot different than what we did with the point to feature and filter options. We can actually still use the filter option with lines and polygons. So let's go take a look at some code and then it should make more sense. Okay, the first thing we need to do, as always, is to declare a layer variable, which we will call layer client lines. Then we can come down here into our document ready function and assign that variable to a new layer that we're going to create using the leaflet GeoJSON AJAX constructor method. So first we'll pass it this GeoJSON data file, which is called clientlines.geojson, and of course we'll add it to the map right away. We'll keep things simple for now and just read in the data without styling it at all. And of course we'll add it to our layer control. Now let's see what it looks like in the map. Refresh. Okay, we see all of these linear projects now in the default blue color. Now let's style them. To do that, we'll go back to our editor, to the place in our code where we called the GeoJSON constructor method, and we'll pass it some options. The style option we set to style client linears. And then we set an on each feature option to process client menus. Then we'll go all the way to the bottom outside of the ready function where we define functions and declare a function called style client linears that receives a feature variable that we're going to call JSON. And then inside of our curly brackets that define a code block, we're going to write a function. Okay, first we're going to declare a variable called at for attributes. And we set it to the JSON properties property. And this gives us access to all the attribute information. It's kind of shorthand, it just saves us from having to write out JSON.properties every time. Next we set up a switch statement. And this is going to tell us what to do dependent on the value of the type attribute. Then for each possible case of the type variable, we're going to return a JavaScript object literal that contains the values of the path options that we want to use to style the line. The first case will be pipeline. And if it's pipeline, we're going to return the style object that has the color property set to Peru, which is a brownish color. And we'll need a break out of this case. And then we'll check the next case, which is 
flow line. And if the type attribute is flow line, then we're going to return style object with the color property set to navy. And we'll break out of this case statement. Now I'm going to copy this and paste it back in here because the next one we're going to do is a variation on flow line. It's an estimated flow line. And we want to show that it's an estimated flow line by changing the symbology so it's a dashed line. And we do that by setting the dash array property to, oh, let's say 5.5. Five. I'm just going to paste this next one in here too. This one will be the case of electric line. And it's going to get a dark green color. Next we'll handle the case where the type attribute is access road confirmed and it'll get a dark red color. I'm going to copy this and paste it in again because the next case is access road estimated. And we'll show that it's estimated by adding the same dash array 55 to the style object that gets returned. Now I'll handle one more case and that will be extraction. And if the attribute type is extraction, then we're going to return a style object with the color set to indigo. And a break. And then if it's none of these, we'll handle it with a default case. And in that case, we're going to style the line with the color dark goldenrod. That needs to be in single quotes. So does indigo. And finally we'll break this. We probably don't really need a break there, but we'll put it in anyway. Okay, let's take a look. I'm going to refresh the map. And it looks like we got a little error somewhere. We'll check our Google Developer Tools. Process Client Linears is not defined. Okay, I know what the issue is. Let's go back to the code. And up. Up where we set our options for the layer, we declared Style Client Linears, and we also declared for, on each feature, Process Client Linears. And we wrote the style client linears function, but we didn't write the process client linears function. So I could go ahead and delete that, but I'm not going to right now. I'm just going to go ahead and write that function. So we'll say function process client linears. And this gives us both a feature in JSON form and a layer object. And we'll create an attribute variable again just by setting it to the JSON properties property and then we're going to bind a tooltip to the layer and that tooltip's going to have an HTML tag, an H4 tag that's just going to say linear project and then we'll add the project attribute and then we'll stick in a closing h4 tag and we'll add the type with the type attribute. And then we'll put an HTML line break in there to give us a new line. And then we'll add the right of way width and the right of way width attribute. All right, we should be good to go now. Let's go back to the map, hit refresh. And no errors this time. So I'll close Google Developer Tools. Now you see that we have all our linear projects. But they're color coded by type. And they all have a pop up as well. Something's wrong with that. Let's go take a look. Yeah, this needs to have the closing tag for this H4 header tag. Yeah, that's a little bit more like it. Okay, so we added a polyline. Now let's add a polygon. 
This will be another environmental constraint. It's going to be burring owl habitat. So first we'll go up here to the top of our JavaScript and we'll declare this layer variable. We'll call it layer buowl for burring owl. Then we'll come down here right after client lines and we'll set that variable to a new JSON layer using the GeoJSON AJAX constructor method. And that file is called wildlife buowl, I believe, dot geojson. We'll go ahead and set some options. We'll set the style property to style buowl. The on each feature option to process buowl. And the filter option to, you guessed it, filter buowl. And we'll go ahead and add it to the map right away. And we'll add it to the layer control as well. Let's see. Layer buowl. All right. Then we'll go all the way to the bottom of the page and create our functions. The style buowl function takes a feature variable, which we'll call JSON, like we've been doing. And then inside our function, we'll declare an attribute variable again, just like we've been doing. And then we'll set up a switch statement on the historically occupied attribute. Now, if you're wondering where I'm getting these attribute names, it comes right here from QGIS. So here we have a wildlife BUL habitat layer. If we open the attribute table, we'll see these are the names of our attributes here. Habitat, historically occupied, recent status, and habitat ID. And I created this GeoJSON file by exporting this particular table in QGIS. So in GeoJSON, our properties, which are the same thing as attributes, have the same names. So it's not rocket science. So we'll first test the case that historically occupied equals yes. And if that's the case, we'll return a color object that has a color of deep pink and a fill color of yellow. And we'll break our case statement, start a new one. And in this case, we'll be undetermined because I spelled it wrong. OK. And in this case, we'll return another style object and that's just going to be color yellow. And we'll break this as well. And those are the only two options that are in the file. We could have used an if-then statement. This way we're set up if we ever decide to change some of the coding for this attribute. Now this is following our general theme where the deep pink outline indicates a higher level of environmental constraint, either an active nest, or in this case, a habitat that was known to at least have been at least one time occupied by burrowing owls in the past. Now we have not used a filter function in a while, so we'll do that now just to reinforce it. These burrowing owl habitats are basically prairie dog towns, and occasionally one gets plowed up and disappears, and they get marked as we move in our recent status attribute. But we don't want to show those on our map, so we're going to filter them out of the data. We do that by writing a function called filter buowl, and it also gets a feature that we're going to call JSON. And then in our code block, to be consistent, we'll declare attribute variable and set it equal to the JSON properties. Then in this case, we'll just use an if statement. It says if the recent status attribute equals remove, then we're going to return false. Otherwise, we're going to return true. So it's pretty simple. Now when we call the GeoJSON constructor method, this function gets run on every feature that gets read in from the file. If the value of recent status is removed, then that feature doesn't get included in our data. We forgot to write our process buowl function.
And this one, remember that on each feature, takes both a feature and a layer. This should be getting to be old hat by now. And inside this function, all we're going to do is bind a tooltip. And we'll start with H4 again. We'll say habitat ID plus attribute habitat ID plus closing H4 tag historically occupied plus the historically occupied attribute. And then we'll add in a line break and just put status in here. Attribute recent status. Okay. Let's try one more time. Refresh. Looks like it worked. So I'm going to close Google Developer Tools. I'm going to zoom in here. And notice these yellow features now are burrowing owl habitats. The ones with the deep pink boundary are historically occupied habitats. And the ones without the deep pink boundary are not known to have been historically occupied. And I'm not going to check every one, but we won't see any where the status is removed because we filtered those out with our filter function. Okay, one more polygon layer. Sometimes you don't need tooltips or filters or attribute specific styling. You just have a simple set of data that you want to show in a specific color. For instance, we have a layer of great blue heron rookeries that we just want to display. We don't need any fancy functions to do this. We just go declare a variable called layer GBH. And then create it by setting it to our layer created by the GeoJSON constructor method. Again, this should be getting to be old hat by now. Dot Ajax. And the first parameter is going to be a URL to the data file. And that, I believe, is just called wildlife GBH. GeoJSON. Now we will pass it one option, a style option, but instead of setting the style option to a function that returns a style object, we can just set the style option to an actual style object as a JavaScript object literal. So we'll say color is fuchsia. Now we can also add a tooltip by using the layers bind tooltip method. The tooltip's just going to say great blue heron nesting area. And this is just so users will know what it is. Now each polygon on the layer will have the same style and the same tooltip. And we'll add it to the map. And we'll also add it to the layer control. Layer GBH. And we'll go take a look. So let's zoom in here and see that now we have these fuchsia polygons with the tooltip great blue heron nesting area. Now we didn't have to write any on each function or style function or anything like that because all these polygons are getting the same style and they're all getting the same tooltip. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. This data set that we're looking at here is going to form the core set of data that we will work with for the remainder of this course. And as you can see, it's a fairly large set of data. It's not tiny, it's a realistic data set. In the next lecture, we'll look at some options for styling lines and polygons that require plugins. We won't actually add any of these to our code, but we'll look at their examples. By this point, you should be familiar with adding plugins, and if you see something you need, feel free to explore it on your own. Then after that, we're going to start a new section on analysis, and we'll start adding some useful functionality to this application. We have all our data loaded and symbolized, now we're going to actually use it to do something useful. And we'll see you then.